Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you here today. If you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today, would you say amen? Amen. amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord, to sing his praises, to worship him. Let's focus on the Lord and singing his praises this morning. Let's all stand together as we sing. to connect and invest in each other's lives to create lasting friendships. We also want to study God's word and grow in our faith together. We want to build stronger relationships with a community of women that is empowered through the church and by the church. So whether you're a college student, single or divorced, stay-at-home mom or working mom, we have a place for you. We're excited about the upcoming opportunities and events with our young women's ministry. We hope that you can join us for a time of fellowship sun Saturday, June 25th, for our first monthly brunch. We look forward to building a community with you. Monthly with all of you. We'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm here. <laughs> yep. 
June the 25th, ladies, I hope you'll take advantage of this. It's going to be a great time of fellowship and insp inspiration and encouragement. And see these two ladies, I'm sure they can tell you even more details uh, in, the, in the days to come. Thank you so much for being here. You're looking wonderful. Look to the person on either side of you. said, you're better looking up close than you are far away. <laughs> you really are. What a delight it is, especially those of you who are our guests. We're honored that you're here. At the end of the service, I'd like to meet you. We have a gift at the back we'd like to give to you. It's at our welcome center. So see me at the back as a guest, and uh, let me get, take a moment to speak with you and encourage you to be a part of the Eastside family. It is our delight to be here and to be in the house of the Lord together. Um, what an um, amazing week was had this past week in Vacation Bible School. And an exciting time, a blessed time. And we trust and we know that all labor is for profit. And we know that as we invest, God will give a return. Sometimes soon, sometimes later. But we can trust that God is at work in the lives of people and especially our children. Uh, and I thank you for the investment that you've made this past week in the lives of our children and extended families and in our neighborhoods all around this area. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the, the wonderful ministry that we had this past week. The food that you see here was collected during Vacation Bible School, and it will be shared with the Chipola Ministries, and uh, we'll be able to continue the blessing in the lives of others. So thank you again for all that you have done. And um, this morning as I was just making my way around, uh, <laughs> I always run out of time because I like to just spend time with each and every one of you. So forgive me if I don't get to you before so you get a chance to see me afterwards. But um, I met uh, and was talking to uh, just one of our friends over here, Derek Kramer. Um, and he shared with me, Derek over here, um, he shared with me that his son passed away this past week. Uh, and I want us to just pause and pray for Derek and his family, uh, Stephen who uh, went home to be with the Lord and uh, we're grateful for that confidence that we have in knowing Christ to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord isn't that a great truth to know and see if you don't have Christ you don't have that peace and assurance it's still painful it's still a struggle but there's something sustaining about the hope we have in Christ. Amen, church? Amen. So be sure to encourage them in the days to come with prayers and words of encouragement and let them know that we will continue to pray for them. And um, so do me a favor. I want to ask everybody to stand. And uh, after I pray, we're going to pray for the family. And then I want to ask you just to turn and greet those around you and just take a moment to encourage one another this morning as God has brought us together. Father, <clears throat> I, I'm thankful for the words of the song that we began our time with, that we want to welcome you. And I'm glad that I can come into this place and acknowledge your presence and to admit, Lord, I, I need you. And I pray that you would speak to my heart and our hearts this morning. Lord, I, I pray that I would be attentive, that you would give me ears to hear what you want me to learn and to discover and to do. Thank you for being the God of all comfort. There are many things that we don't understand, struggles and pains, sorrows that weigh us down. But this we know, that you are our God, the God of compassion and comfort. And we pray for the Kramer family that God, you would sustain them. And may they sense your presence each and every day hour by hour lead them and guide them by your spirit through your word and bring to them comfort we're grateful that we have a hope that is steadfast and sure that we know that we have a place with you and that for all of eternity we will rejoice all of eternity we will be around your throne embraced by your love enthralled with your praises we thank you for that I pray now that you'll just speak to us in this service guide us we ask lead us may we do everything that's pleasing in your sight and we ask this in Jesus name and everybody said 
Amen. Now take a moment and greet those around you and encourage them, would you? Sing church. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. All our fortunes, our glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of
praise this morning. Would you pray with me? Father, truly, we look forward to that day, that glorious day, when we shall see you face to face. Lord, I pray that today we all can say that we will see Jesus in heaven. Father, I pray if there's someone here today that cannot say that, is not sure, that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, speak to us in a special way today. Move in our midst in a very special way today. Open our hearts to what you have for us. And Lord, as always, our prayer is that you would have your will and way in the hearts and lives of each and every one of us today. And we give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated.
Take your Bibles, please, and find the Gospel of Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. I just need to figure out how I could pick this church family up and take it with me when I moved to Mississippi. Mm. The name of Jesus. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. I want to begin reading in verse 17. You listen as I read these words of Holy Scripture aloud with you. Now it happened on a certain day as he, that is Jesus, was teaching. There were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and of uh, Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and led him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst of Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, Why, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately, he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, what have we, what have seen, excuse me, we have seen strange things today. We marvel over the miracle, but I do not want us to miss the message. We applaud the actions of those few to get a needy person to Jesus. And that's really what the church is here today for, to get people to Jesus. And I would pray that this church would be known far and wide and house to house, as this is the place, these are the people where I can meet Jesus. But we re need to remember not to be dazzled by the strange things as it was described. A strange thing happened. The very fact that all of a sudden dust and, and, and tiling and all of that would begin to fall out of the ceiling, that would have gotten my attention. God is doing something. And all of a sudden I look up and there's, there's four faces looking at me from the hole in the, now my ceiling. And then all of a sudden, here, here is a stretcher, and how they manage that, or how big a hole, we're not told. All we know is that they come easing him down. And I mean, he went from the back row to the front row like that. And there he was in the midst of Jesus, right in the, the middle. But as I said, I don't want us to overlook the message. And we need not be dazzled by the strange things, but we need to be delighted to know the one thing, that through Jesus Christ, there is forgiveness. Why forgiveness? Do I need 
Forgiveness? Yes. 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 Let me say it again. Yes. I, you, need forgiveness. Now I want to raise two questions. Number one, why? And the second one, how? Why do I need forgiveness? The reason we need forgiveness is found in the word that God spoke to all of us, revealed to all of us, that is characteristic of all of us, and that is this, sin. Sin. The Bible says we are sinners. It's a foreign concept for a lot of people today. In the year 2022, it's a word that you rarely see spoken in public. All of the events going on in our country are being blamed on a lot of things that are, quite honestly, unrealistic. The real issue is sin. Sin. We need forgiveness because all of us have sinned. We can hide it. We try to cover it up, paint over it. We can mock it. We can deny it. But, beloved, I have to tell you the truth. You need forgiveness because of the sin that marks and measures your life. We do. When I say you, don't, don't, please, you know, I may, stuck, I got three of them pointing right back at me. So I, I'm not here to look in a condescending way. I'm here to reveal to you that which is greatest of need of every person, wherever they are. We have a need for forgiveness because we are all measured and marked by sin. Consider the birthmarks of sin. Psalm 51, verse 5, the Bible says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. Being brought into this world, I was born a sinner. John 3, 6 through 8 says, But that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Without a second birth, we'll never know the joy of eternal life. I heard Bailey Smith many years ago say we can be born once and die twice, or we can be born twice and die once. Psalm 58 verse 1 says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Galatians 3, 22, But the scriptures have confirmed all under sin that the promise by faith in Christ Jesus might be given to those who believe. There is a birthmark that we're all born with. It is something that every one of us, it's in our DNA. We have sinned. We are a sinner. Now, don't swell up in your pride too much. Don't bow up. I'm just a newspaper boy just delivering to you the news. But here's the news. Until you and I understand our status, we'll never understand what Christ has done for us and our reason for being so joyful today. This is my story. This is my song. Singing his praises all the day long. You see, that's my birthmark. I was born a sinner. I have seven, excuse me, How many do I? Five? I got a bunch of grandkids. (laughs) I lost count. (laughs) 
But you know what? As cute and as good looking and as smart and as awesome as they are, them little whippersnappers, I didn't have to teach a one of them how to be selfish. <laughs> and when they don't get their way, especially when they're little, the party's over. Hello? Now, where did they learn that? Oh, they were just watching you, Delta. <laughs> okay. No. It is by our birthmark we're sinful. Some of us are burdened over sin. We're way beyond admitting our sin. We're just burdened by it. You see, Psalm 38, 4 says, My iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. What is this weighting you down? What is it that's pressing you down? What is this like a heavy thing that's over you? It's sin, and it burdens us down. And until you know what Jesus can do for you, you'll never know what it means to be free from that burden. But there are a lot of people listening by me by way of FaceTime this morning or in this very room, and the honest to goodness truth is that's where I am. I'm burdened with my sin. Some of us understand sin's brokenness. Sin has absolutely crushed us. It's brokenness. Psalm 69 says, You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before you. Reproach has broken my heart, and I'm full of heaviness. Yeah. Admit it. I sit here this morning, I stand here today burdened and broken and I can't fix it and I've tried the first 19 years of my life. That was my story. I grew up in church. That's where I learned to sin. I went to church. I didn't know what it was like not to be in church. But I want to tell you, going to church, there was no relief. I didn't have any release of that burden. I was broken every Sunday that I was reminded that my sin had separated me from God. Yeah. And some of you sit here today and you listen. Yeah, I can't put it back together. Psalm 38 says in verse 8, I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. I've been on death row. I served as a correctional officer and worked on death row. I've talked to men who describe themselves as severely broken, and I don't know what to do. Proverbs 25, 28 says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. We wonder why the world is so chaotic and so such a mess. It's because we're broken and burdened by our sin. What would prevail on a man's heart that he would attack children It's sin. Sin has broken us. And until we as a nation admit we are sinners before God, there's little hope for us. But there is. You see, why do I need forgiveness? I'm broken, burdened by sin. Proverbs 5 verse 21 says, For all the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he ponders all of our paths. His own iniquities entrap the wicked man. And he is caught by the cords of his sin. We're in bondage. In bondage. We're caught by the cords of our sin. It's like... It's like I'm going to do better. So I start making a move and, I, and I, I, got, I got a little freedom and all of a sudden it's like that rubber band reaches its end and I stop. And the next thing I know, I, I'm not there. I'm way back over here, further behind than I was when I started. You ever felt that way? 
That's the bondage of sin. I'm caught. And so I keep working and I'll work my way. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do right. I'm going to do less. And bang, I'm right back. God says, you need forgiveness. And this is why. That's why I believe when Jesus caused that man to stand up from his bed of affliction, that wasn't the biggest issue. The greater story was that I give you forgiveness. Mm. John 8, 33 says, Jesus answered them, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Do you hear that? I've tried all of this. I've, I've doubled my tithe. I've helped them vacation Bible school. But I haven't broken the grip of sin. I put my head on the pillow and I pray, oh God, don't call me home tonight. Give me another day. Help me, oh God. I'll do better. My dear friend, we need forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Well, it's when God says, I will accept you. Forgiven. Have you ever been estranged from somebody? At odds? Had an issue? And you go to that person or that person comes to you and you ask, will you forgive me? And they say, why, all oh, shucks, sure, don't think anything about it. What they're saying is, I accept you. A holy, holy, holy God is willing and ready today to say, I will accept you. I forgive you. Oh, wait a minute, Dylan. You don't, you don't know my story. I don't need to know your story. I know his story. And this is the story. That he will forgive us. Ephesians 1 verse 6, the Bible says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Did you hear that? He made us accepted in the beloved. Ezekiel chapter 43 verse 27, When these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward that the priest shall make burnt offerings in the altar and your peace offerings and I will accept you, says the Lord. Colossians 1.20, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. To reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, made, having made peace through the blood of his cross. That's what it means to be forgiven. It leads to the second question, How? How can I, can we experience forgiveness? You ready? It's the most profound thing you'll ever hear. And it comes from a simple Baptist preacher. How can I experience forgiveness? Through Jesus Christ. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Through Jesus Christ. How, how can you make such an assertion? How can you make such a claim? What did Jesus, what did Scripture record for us happen on that? All the religious crowd were there. Oh, that's not possible. You don't have that authority. You don't have that power. You don't have that position, but he does. And either you will step into eternity with Jesus or you'll step into eternity without him and then you will discover that he did 
and you missed it. I do not wish anyone to step out into eternity without Jesus Christ. This and so much more, but just to know that he has forgiven me. He has the power. Look at verse 24 of the text that we read. That you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Either God's deceiving or God's correct. I choose to believe the latter. And Jesus that day demonstrated he has the power because he took that which was earthly, physically impossible. No man, other man could say, get up and walk. <laughs> I've tried. I don't have that power. He does. And he said to the man, get up. I, I have a realization, you, and you, I'm sure you do too, but realize that he got up and walked, but eventually he laid down again. And this time, they did bury him, but he was forgiven. And to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. How am I present with him? Because he has forgiven me, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. That's the message. That's the message, that he will forgive us. You see, he made a purchase. In Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible says, in him, that is in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Riches of his grace means there's enough for every one of us. His stock market has not dropped. His stock has increased. Through the riches of his grace, he offers to every one of us redemption. Now, I'm sure I've said this with you in a short time I'm with you, but I grew up with mother collecting S&H green stamps. How many even know what I'm talking about? Better yet, how many of you don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> well, when you went to the grocery store, they'd give you these stamps. And you could go to the s &H Redemption Center and they, you'd put the stamps in these little books. And after you collected so many books, you could go down to the Redemption Center and you could redeem something. I got my first, I think, baseball glove because mom saved up enough redemption, little stamps, took, I don't know, 10 or 12, I don't know how many. She took a paper sack full down, down there and came out with a baseball glove. I just, I don't know why I remember it. I remember it. But here's what I learned. Only if she had enough stamps could she redeem whatever she wanted. So when I read redemption, the first thing I think of is those s &H green stamps. That, that this is what my mom did for me. I want you to think further than that, wiser than that, more mature than that. Understand, we had nothing to offer for our redemption. My pockets are empty. My hands are empty. Yet Jesus redeemed me. He purchased me. Do you not understand that? How can I have forgiveness? How can I leave? And even though I'm awkward, even though I stumble, even though I struggle, this thing I know He has forgiven me. Why do I love him? Why do I want to serve him? Why do I want to tell others about him? Why? Because of what he did for me. Is that not true for you? The world is screaming for answers and the church sits with its lips zipped. Shame on us. We've got the story. We've got the message. We have the answer, and his name is Jesus. He forgives us. He redeems us. That is, he purchased us, and he offers us. This is what Jesus offers us. He offers us a new life. Remember, we're born in sin. We're dead in sin. But in John chapter 5, the Bible says, and this is the testimony that God has given to us, eternal life. 
and this life is in his Son, Jesus. Who, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. How easy is that to understand? You have Jesus, you have life. You do not have Jesus, there's no life. I cannot remain dead in my sin because he has given me life. I've been born again. New life in him. My burdens are lifted. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What it would be today to come to this altar and kneel before him and say, dear Jesus, I'm overwhelmed. My burden of sin is too much. He said, come to me, and I will lift you up. I'll take away the burden. Whew. Mm. My brokenness is healed. That man was broken. He couldn't go anywhere, do anything unless others helped him. But only one could heal his brokenness. And what happened after that day? Oh, I imagine he set that bed out on his front door. I said, weren't you, weren't you? He said, yeah, let me tell you. Some buddies got me to Jesus, and Jesus did something I could never do for myself. He healed me. He healed me. He restored me. And think of this. He set me free. He set me free. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And here's the way I like to look at that. Free indeed. I'm not stuck to an extension cord. I see these people walking dogs and they got little leashes on them. Well, some of them, the, the dog's walking them. And they're just holding on to the leash. No, no. You see, when he set me free, the leash was snapped, broken. And just like a puppy, when that leash breaks, bam, I'm out of here. I am free. That's what he offers me. Who is this that offers this? It's Jesus. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven to you for his name's sake. Do you hear that? For his name's sake. I don't sign my signature to my freedom. I let him sign it. And when anybody asks, I just hold it up and say, look at the signature. He signed it. He purchased me. He redeemed me. He set me free. Therefore, I know that my sins are forgiven. This morning as I was in my quiet time, I was just reading through a portion of Scripture and I came upon this passage and I had to sneak it in. So listen to this in Acts chapter 8, verse 18. And when Simon saw that the, through laying of the hands of the apostles, the hand of the Spirit was given. And he offered them money. That is, Simon said, hey, I, let me pay you. I want to be able to do that. Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness and pray of God. Perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are, listen to this, poisoned by bitterness, bound by iniquity. Now I'm going to get to meddling because I see a lot of grumpy, miserable, angry, frustrated folks. And here's what God says of you. You are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Iniquity is another word for sin. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Did you hear that? 
I sit here and I'm bitter. It don't take that to make me snap your head off. Oh, God. Please forgive me and cleanse me and renew a right spirit within me. Church, could we not make that our prayer before him today? Oh, God, cleanse me, forgive me, renew a right spirit within me. Set me free from this bitterness and sin that binds me. There are couples going at one another and kids fighting with moms and dads. Oh, if we could just understand that God wants to forgive us and cleanse us. Mm -mm -mm. Psalm 130, if the Lord should mark iniquities, sin, O oh Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4, you ought to write that down. But there is forgiveness. You've heard the lies of Satan. You've heard the deception of the world. And now today I pray you've heard the gospel truth that I can be forgiven. See, we measure sin in little or big, black or white. It's sin. And I need forgiveness. After I became a Christian, and I was 19, that was just a few years ago, I wanted so much to please Jesus and honor him. And I was messing up. And it, it, it just it broke my heart. Why would I think a thought? Or why would I say that? Why would I do that? I was supposed to be a Christian. What I learned early, he makes you perfect in his sight he accepts you but he continually works in you so that he can work through you to form you and shape you into his likeness it's sort of like some of these uh, roads that we have under construction and some of them been under construction ever since I've been here and I'm reminded that I'm just like that road I, I'm constantly under construction he's shaping me working me but my pastor taught me a verse, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then the thing that I urge you to do, I beg of you to do even now, is to say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner I need your forgiveness. I trust you and ask you to cleanse me and forgive me and come into my life and live your life through me for the rest of my days on this earth. And even as a believer, oh Lord, I've sinned against you. I ask you to cleanse me and forgive me. Interesting word, cleanse, in 1 John 1, 9, is the word cartharizo. We get our word catheter. It means to pull away, to clean, to take away. You see, God, when he cleanses us, he begins to take away. And all those wicked things, all those sinful things, all those things that I used to do, God just, he begins to cleanse me. And, and I, I don't, I, I'm not prone to, I, it's just like he begins to flush it away. Amen? And so I admit, cleanse me and renew a right spirit within me. 
Folks, we need forgiveness. And we can have it in Jesus Christ. I ask you to bow your head. I don't know where you are in your journey. I wouldn't presume to know. But this I know, that God loves us and desires to do His work in our lives. He wants to forgive us. I know that because He was willing to give up His darling Son and allow Him to purchase us by shedding His blood for us. So if you've never confessed him, you've never asked for his forgiveness, then do so right where you are seated. In a minute, we're going to have a hymn of invitation, and maybe you need to put some feet to your prayers. Maybe you need to move to this altar and do some business with God. And let him renew you and set you free and cleanse you. I believe, this I know, that he will do what he says he'll do. He has the power. Lord, be pleased with what we do. Hear our prayer. Help me to live every day free, clean. Release these burdens that are over us. Lord, I somehow would pray for our nation. We're so wicked. We're so foolish. We've turned our back on you. And yet you extend your hand. And you call us to come back. Please forgive us. Please Extend your mercy another day. Heal our land. Heal our souls. Comfort us. Help us to move forward like that man did so long ago. Not encumbered, but free. Free. Forgiven. I ask you to stand. I'm just going to ask our instrumentalists or Ron to play or sing and our heads are bowed. You, you just do this business with God. You're listening by way of media. Make your chair, make your couch, your altar. Ask His cleansing. Ask His forgiveness. Start out free. Start this week off free. No burdens anymore. Cleanse me.
I'm amazed, aren't you? That I can be forgiven? Thank you, Jesus. I, I, matter of fact, you probably ought to go ahead and say that out loud. Just thank you, Jesus, that he's forgiven me. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I don't know what else to do. I guess I'm going to go home. But I pray that what you've heard, you'll share. Because you're going to meet somebody this week that's broken, burdened, bound. I got a word for you. I heard it Sunday. You can be forgiven. <laughs> All right. You listened well. And may God help us. To share the story of Jesus. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. All right. I'll see you here, there, or in the air. Remember. Thank you. <laughs> I love Brother Bill. He keeps me out of a lot of trouble. And Grady's grinning at me too because we need that section of chairs uh, moved. So that section to the back wall, that way. Now, all of you good folks over here, by the time you get over there, you ought to be able to get at least one chair. <laughs> or at least go up to him and say, you're doing a good job. For those of you who are our guests today, I'll be at the back. I'd love to meet you. You're looking for a church home. You don't need to look anywhere else. This is the place. These are the people that I want to serve with. Thank you again for being here today. We continue to pray for the Kramer family. Uh, that's, that's, uh, the other, the vacation Bible school, the decisions that were made, the food that was given. God, does it work? And in spite of what we may see or hear, he is at work. Amen. He is at work. And what's this world coming to? I hear that often. <laughs> I'll tell you what it's coming to. It's coming to Jesus. It's coming to him. Let's pray. Well, no, Brother Ronald, sing us yeah, out of here. Sing song. There you go. We sang earlier, what a day that will be. Let's sing that chorus again. That will be yes, Jesus. when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he